Newsweek says secret tunnel under New York synagogue sparks chaotic scenes. But I will not bury the lead. I will simply just play for you this video so you can all say, holy, what the is going on? For those that are listening, the video depicts a Jewish man climbing out of a secret tunnel in the sidewalks of New York City, swatting at the camera and then running away. It looks like a skit. And uh, again, my favorite tweet from this is um, uh, imagine seeing a Jewish man climb out of an underground tunnel in New York sidewalk, not having your camera to film it, and trying to explain to your friends what you saw without sounding like an anti-Semite. It's already been a wild year, man. This is insane. <laughs> so the story is, there's a secret tunnel built under a New York synagogue. The police show up. Cement trucks come to fill in the tunnel. Soiled mattresses are pulled from this crevice. Young men then rip the walls down uh, this wood paneling and break through the wall to try and occupy the space to stop the the uh, construction crews from cementing it in. When the police show up, young Jewish men fight the police and a dozen are arrested. And now everyone is saying, what the f is going on with secret Jewish tunnels in New York City? The Jews are hanging out with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, so I have a friend that, that would be the cool explanation. That would be the fun one. Um, I have a friend that is a uh, young Jewish man that lives in lives on Long Island, and he sent me some information about this. Apparently, there is a sect of young Jewish men that are considered uh, they're Israelis from a, secret, a fringe sect of Judaism to come to the U.S. as teenagers to study with little to no supervision. They have no money, awful living conditions, and no regard for anyone or anything outside of their ridiculous beliefs that essentially amount to treating the Lug Lubavitcher Rebbe, who passed away in the 90s, as a deity. They consider him to be the Messiah and refuse to acknowledge that he is no longer alive. The rumor is that they dug the tunnel so they'd have unrestricted access to the main synagogue here when it's closed, as it was for a bit during COVID. Um, the, apparently the Rebbe used to give dollars out every Sunday along with other blessings, people would line up. So he was a, an icon and there, are, there are, there's a sect of Judaism that thinks he's the Messiah. And I, apparently they had a underground tunnel to, cause they were fighting the man. So do you think that's what this is? is uh, look, when I, when I saw the police coming in and then these young men start fighting cops, I'm like zealotry, immediate mm -hmm. ideological zealot zealotry. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's, there's zero percent chance you save this tunnel once they've discovered it. Mm -hmm. The idea that a dozen young Jewish men could fight the police off and preserve this was insane. Mm -hmm. The only reason they would then do it is if their ideology was stronger than their logic. The In their minds, they're thinking, I know we'll lose, but for this reason, we must fight to protect our secret tunnel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's hilarious. I, I've got the Wikipedia, the guy that they're talking about that has passed away. His name is Menachem Mendel Schneer, Schneerson. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. I'm going to copy the Wikipedia on the guy. I, I got it right here. Yeah. So Menachem Mendel Schneerson. Yeah. And so he, he's 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 dead. Yeah. But they believe he was what a, a deity or something. This, this particular sect apparently believes that he was he is the Messiah and. Uh, uh, he was he was well loved by by people in the community and and I guess in, in according to uh, Jews so, and stuff. But uh, there there are people. Leader that are of the, the Shabbat Lubavitch movement. How do how do the tunnels come into play here though? That's they didn't yeah. want to be held uh, down by the man. They wanted to be able to get to synagogue, man. Oh, this was because oh. of the COVID lockdown. Well, that's I what people so. say. That's what people say. But it's it's years later now, right? They're they're still not locked down. So why would people? Still I got I got to be honest. If if young men built tunnels. So they could go and, and worship their First Amendment right when the oppressive dictatorship of the state was trying to suppress their constitutional right. That's based. Yeah, I mean, 100 percent. Don't fight but, cops. But what? Yeah. But what are you like, know? what are they still doing down there? If it's I guess if you have a cool tunnel, like you still use the cool tunnel. But yeah. it's, I, I don't know if that's the explanation. They're, they are men. There's got to be guys. something else. Yeah. But exactly. there, there's a there's a very interesting uh, question to be had in this case. What we saw in New York with the shutting down of churches and synagogues was unconstitutional. Judges had ruled it unconstitutional and Cuomo said, go ahead. I'll just make another executive order and shut these things down. The people who were committing the crimes were the police officers trying to stop people from expressing their First Amendment rights. The Constitution is the law of the land, in which case these young men who built a tunnel to be able to go into the synagogue to worship when they were being oppressed by the dictatorship, by the communist authorities, they were in the right. Yes. Clearly, 
I mean, the lockdowns were the the most clearly unconstitutional, especially when in the context of people that wanted to go and practice their religion. I personally am not a believer, but it's protected in the in the Constitution clearly. There's no there's no ambiguity about you you know you have the right to assemble and you have the right to practice your religion there's you know i mean the or the this the country can't make the state can't make a uh laws regarding religion so clearly they they had no authority to do that and there's been there's been no you know nothing's happened since nobody lost their jobs no one got fired you know and Let's and and Let's 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 segue this story about secret Jewish tunnels in the most likely and appropriate direction. Mm -hmm. Civil war. <laughs> so <laughs> when uh, we are now dealing with a question of at what point? Uh, let, 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 let me put it this way. This show is always about being on the correct side of law. Don't break the law. You handle things appropriately. If the cops come to stop you, you comply and then you fight in court because fighting a cop on the street doesn't do anything for you. There are limits, however, and people ask this question. At what point must you defy a police officer? Well, obviously, if the police officer is committing a crime, you are not obeying the law by obeying a police officer who's committing a crime, right? Like if a cop went and was robbing a bank and then ordered you under threat of law to help fill his duffel bags, you should not do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do because if he's threatening your life. Yeah. But if he says, if you don't do this, I'll arrest you. I'd be like, bro, you're the one committing the crime. I'm not going to do this. Herein lies the big challenge. We are dangerously close to this point. Nay, we are already in it where we are seeing police officers engage in illegal activity. We are seeing Border Patrol officers engage in illegal activity. And this this issue of the tunnel under the synagogue brings up a really important question. Sooner or later, it will be impossible to answer what is the right side of the law. So again, what we say is you see a video of a guy and he's being stopped by the police and he fights the cops and the cops defend themselves and the guy dies. And then everyone's like, oh, the cop's racist. And I'm like, dude, if a cop is stopping you, don't fist fight him. You keep your mouth shut. You put your hands behind your back. Then you get in touch with your lawyer and you win in the system, which we have built to 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 deal with these things. But what happens when the police are shutting down churches illegally and now the police are basically kidnapping and threatening you with violence without actual authority the problem there is new york city government asserts the authority to do it the constitution says otherwise and the judges have said otherwise how would we advocate would we tell you no these cops are committing crimes you should ignore them then youtube says nope the cops are always right what's what's the stance that the, the broadcasters will take you literally honestly in a real if you're going to actually talk about this as a realistic situation, the cop's got a gun. You do what the cop says. <laughs> the, the, the long and short of it. The guy with the gun is the one that you listen to. Get out of that situation because you're not going to win a gunfight and the, and okay, the no, government's not going to say, this okay, is, this, this is good. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. A guy shows up wearing a badge that says the new Republic of New York and he's got a gun and he's wearing okay. a uniform and he says, you now are under my jurisdiction. We assert authority here. Do you listen to him? Uh, you you are at that point. There's there's someone trying to force you to do something that is illegal. You are, you have been kidnapped by that guy, and you get away from them. You escape if possible. My point my, but, my my point here is that you're making the assumption that the person wearing the badge of New York City is operating under any kind of constitutional authority. No, I'm making I'm, I mean by saying you should escape. I'm making the assumption that they're illegitimate. The point here is this is this is the point that I've made numerous times as it pertains to these stories. What happens if someone knocks on your door and you go? And there's a clown in total clown garb standing there. And you're like, who are you? What do you want? And he says, I am the clown bureau and we are here to arrest you. We have a warrant. Would you actually listen to the clown bureau? Not I mean, look, the ATF not. shows up at everybody's house every now and again. Right. But the point is, <laughs> you clearly recognize a man in a clown costume is no legal authority. That's absurd. What happens when a person shows up claiming to be law enforcement? But the view and the confidence in the system is thus that you look at it like a clown costume. Like the easier way to explain it is a guy shows up wearing a, a bat. You're in California and he has a new Californian Republic badge, sheriff. And you're like, there's no such thing as the new California Republic. So you're essentially asking what happens when the government loses legitimacy with the average person, when what, the, the authorities do. What happens when it's split and no one knows? Fair enough. Mm. So right now, it's very simple to mm. say if the police show up, you just you, you, you adhere to the system. You get a lawyer. You fight it the best way possible, which is in the courts. But what if the police start killing people? What if what if a police officer 
What if, what if, uh, uh, I mean, look, let's, let's just entertain what this tunnel that they built allegedly was so that they could keep going to church, to synagogue, mm -hmm. when they were illegally barred from doing so. We saw in New York, the police were barricading parks, locking them up and shutting down schools. They were spying on schools. There was one video where a guy's restaurant was closed. He had his door open because he was cleaning and a health inspector came in and gave him a fine for being open. He goes, I'm not open. I'm closed. And they were like, your door is open. And he was like, what? If someone claims they have the authority of government and are violating the law, we cannot advocate that you adhere to a man who's breaking the law. Yeah. That would be telling you to actually be party to lawbreakers. But we have seen police break the law under color of law. We are we are at this point right now since covid and the questions all the question more seriously is on the southern border. Federal law enforcement are assisting illegal immigration. They're committing crimes. Yeah, this is why I got to say this is why it's so important. Elections matter. Elections have consequences, right? We have to have people in an executive role or in government that are representing us. They're supposed to be representing us. That no. are looking out for our and, and this this COVID example rings true in my own community where I was a mayor. And I said, no, I said no to mask mandates, no to vaccine mandates is one of the very few. I had our county uh, county authorities call me and say, you need to be enforcing social distancing at your parks and your cops, your city cops. They need to be enforcing mask mandates and handing out fines. And I said, go pound sand. I mean, <laughs> this you. is this Good. is not. And, and that's what we need to do. We need to find people that have exhibited that type of courage and yeah. that backbone and and support them in office. Otherwise, I, we get what we have today. I think that I whereas I do think that the point you're making is is correct. I think that it is m far worse of a situation in that it's not about finding people that are running that's that have these policies or that are talking about these policies. It's that can it's convincing the people that are voting that these are the correct policies. I think that the 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 there are people that say, hey, I would do this, I would do that, 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 that are at least pointing in the right direction. And I feel like the average person has been, again, talking what we were talking about earlier, what I was mentioning earlier, how, how the average person has been so, so indoctrinated by, the, yeah. the, by Comedy Central's you know, a, a call on politics that they don't have any understanding of why the policies that they're hoping for won't work at all. They don't have any understanding of history. And and I think that that's the majority of our problem is the people that have, the people that that are now in HR departments and in and work in government and stuff like that and 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 leading uh, in polit politi in political positions in in cities across America. They've all been taught that liberalism is not actually the system that we should be supporting. And so I think we need people. We need we need a society that values these things. And unless we have that, we can guarantee that they're going to vote for frivolous, ridiculous things that don't work. Yeah, I, mean, I want to ask you a, a question about this, because one thing that we're constantly saying on the show, and one thing I think basically everyone in this sphere is saying nonstop, is that we need people to actually stand up for their values. It's great to have the right ideas. It's fantastic to know what's yeah. going on. But ultimately, when push comes to shove, you have to be willing to stand up for them. So I'm curious, what inspired you to actually take a stand and say, we're not doing this mask mandate stuff? And when did you reach this conclusion? Because I could just say personally. When this all first started happening, I want to say for the first like couple weeks, I was a little nervous, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe this is something and I will wear a mask. But I want to say by the time we got to April or May, um, I, I was really not with it anymore. And then I, I just remember when the media was completely okay with BLM rioting and when doctors literally signed a yeah. note saying that that was acceptable, I went, oh, it was just <laughs> nonsense. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm curious, like... At what point did you come to this conclusion and what um, inspired you to stick to your guns there? Because a lot of people weren't. A lot of elected leaders were not. No, no. And sadly, that's true. Um, but I think just inherently, I knew that this was wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, right away in about March of 2020, uh, I went on and said quite uh, vociferously that I was opposed to any mask mandates whatsoever. And then news came back around uh, in May, I believe it was, of 2020, where I said yet again, look, I am not going to be utilizing yeah. my police department to enforce these things. I think it's heavy handed. This is not constitutional and uh, maintain that stance for, you know, for the entire time. So I, it is, I, I think you're absolutely right, Phil, that we have, unfortunately, it, it's not just certain media channels, but it's the it's the educational system that we have in this country where we have dumbed it down so bad 
and, and more than that, we're actually teaching people the wrong things. Yep. We have so few people yep. that are, I think, economically and civically literate. Yep. And that's it's just unfortunate. Um, or just literate. Uh, we were talking. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> we were talking there. about this earlier, and I'm not just talking about low reading scores. What I'm saying is, with widespread literacy, it seems as if we became satisfied teaching people to be able to sound out letters and then know what the word was without actually being able to truly comprehend the deeper message of what's being said. This 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 is a, a typical argument against mass literacy programs that I've heard from. Uh, I'm not against mass literacy programs. I just think like. They're not real literacy programs. We're teaching people like how to sound words out. We're not actually teaching them how to right. really truly read. There was this great article I read a long time ago. One of the things that uh, played a factor in me not going to college that argued that college is great for the people who've decided college is the path for them in that you uh, grow up building computers and you want to go somewhere where you can learn to build computers better. You have the capability to build computers and you want to learn from the best. What we did then is we said everyone should go to college no matter what. The problem there is this article said something like you need an average IQ of about 110 to actually go to higher learning. That means you can read and and not just memorize, but actually comprehend the idea that is uh, that is shown to you. And the problem now is by telling everyone to go to college, people of 100 IQ will easily memorize the literature, but not actually understand what it means. What ends up happening then is after a few years, they'll have this jumbled up, confused concept, which they think will make them smart. They think they're smarter than everybody. They actually have no idea what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. I think, is a good example of what's happening in this country. You see a lot of that. Also, you know, people will, will throw this stat around and they'll mention like, oh, yeah, to, to graduate from college, like on average, your IQ is going to be around 110, 115. But I think that's outdated. Uh, I, I'm almost certain that's not the case anymore. No. I think I think the average no. college grad probably has an IQ of like 105, maybe maybe 100 even. Well, the average IQ is 100. That's the point. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think the average college grad is that far above average anymore. No, I agree. I don't I, think I, they're 110, 115. Yeah, I think the issue is often brought up. We have a lot of midwits mm -hmm. in the political space. These are people who are slightly smarter than average, but not really smart enough to grasp these these broader concepts. And so you, you end up with, uh, you know, an, an example would be when uh, Elise Stefanik says, I will certify the elect. She's asked, will you commit to certifying the 2024 election? She says, yes, if it's constitutional. And then NBC, because these people are scumbags and they're evil, mm -hmm. report Elise Stefanik refuses to commit to certifying the 2024 election. The midwit is the Democrat who then goes, whoa. They understand enough of politics. They yeah. read into it, but they're not smart enough to grasp how they're being manipulated. They're, they don't have a minute to think like, well, wait a minute. When should somebody certify election or... Right commit to certifying an election they just like whoa they didn't do the good thing i'll give you they're an example. saying they won't do the good thing salt in cookies did you know that you put <laughs> salt in your cookies when you make them yes how many people have you ever run into because i've run into a lot where they get mad i've been in numerous occasions where i've been baking cookies and when i put when i pulled the salt out they said don't put salt in it what are you doing <laughs> because they thought you don't put salt in desserts which you literally do wow recipes but, but there are a lot of <laughs> Yeah, those would be terrible. Yeah, knowing those cookies, they didn't put any salt in them. Yeah, but a lot of they don't understand the point of putting salt in food. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so they think cookies have sugar, not salt. Don't put salt in it. Mm -hmm. Someone who is smart enough to understand recipes can make cookies, but not smart enough to understand that. Yeah, sometimes things sound counterintuitive. Well, it goes back to our sense. educational system because they have they don't they don't teach. I mean, the whole the whole word educate, I think, in Greek or Latin is to discover within, right? Mm. And and that used to be the process. You would go and actually try to become educated. You would learn. You would have deductive reasoning, critical you know critical reasoning skills. So you would learn not just reading, writing, or arithmetic, but you would learn how to debate somebody. Right? You'd have these conversations. I mean, try pulling an average person in on this show <laughs> and have them just think and debate. I mean, that just sadly that's not happening. And I think it's it's endemic of the educational system that we have today. People just can't think for themselves. So so that is part and parcel what I think you're going to say that that's uh, that's really a communist. Uh, I know I, I was just actually to gonna, give somebody 
Here you go. No, I was just going to bring up the fact that man on a street uh, is is a thing that everybody does for a reason because there are plenty, yeah. of, plenty of hilarious people out there. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.